Welcome to lesson 12. In this lesson, I want to show you some features of the Analyzer Cam Path Manager. First of all, I would like to show you the small piece strategies. If you go into Optimizer Settings, in Additional Parameters, you have a section here that's called Small Path Strategy. With a nesting machine, when you do your final cut, you might tend to run into troubles with small pieces that they move when you cut all the way through. It depends on the effectiveness of your Wacom table. So there are actually two parameters that we can adjust. There's a threshold of uh, if a piece goes below that threshold in, uh, in area, in this case we set it to 30,000 square millimeters. So that's roughly a piece of uh, about 200 by 150 millimeter. So then uh, the strategy comes into place. There's also another threshold, that's the length of the edge. So pieces that are above this area threshold, but if they have an uh, edge length of less than 60 millimeter in this case, then the a small piece strategy will be implemented as well. Uh, so what we can do there is we can lift the router up uh, basically instead of cutting all the way through into the waste board it'll leave in this case one millimeter so you might have to experiment with your machine a little bit uh, or if your table is very plain you can go down to something like 0.3 or 0.5 millimeter or even less and then you can just break the piece out and with one millimeter you might have to take your trimmer and trim it out so these settings you can adjust according to your uh, machine. Now to actually activate it, you go into Path Manager and you're actually only interested in your final cuts, your external cut. They go all the way through like this one here, the one that's uh, minus 0.2 millimeter. So what you can do is click at that, you edit it, and you can enable the small small piece strategy here. So what it does is in your last cut here, this one, instead of having the final depth of minus 0.2, it'll lift your router and it'll just do a one millimeter. So any any cut that you specify here will not go any deeper than one millimeter. So that's actually quite simple. So that's all you need to do, and I can demonstrate that quickly what happens. We have discovered here that we want to optimize and nest, but uh, all those pieces are way bigger than on a threshold, so we quickly draw a couple of additional pieces and we add them to the assembly. So we draw a piece of 200 by 140 and 18.3 so that's basically the thickness of our uh, our material here yeah. now we do another one for the length threshold so we make it about 1500 long and the width would only be 55 millimeter. Eighteen point three. Okay, so this one has a bigger area than 30,000 square meters, but it has a edge length of less than 60 millimeter. So that should trigger the length threshold. You can quickly put a couple of uh, measurements just to demonstrate it. Now we need to put some power properties to this. We're going to analyze a cat power properties. Select the two of them. Call it small piece. The material we have 18 millimeter internal there. We do 
do that for the next one as well. We nest it and we select the assembly of the cabinet. Save that. That's our next one there. We save it. Now let's run it through Analyzer. Do our job number. Work order, call it 12 in this case. Another geometry script. Yeah, here are our pieces here. 55, that's correct. And the translator script. Now we're going to analyze a cam. Now we run it through the panel optimizer. to number 12, we're colored at 12, and we got the internal 18 millimeter material. Select the point nearby. And here is our nesting. Now let's have a look what it's done. It's our small piece here. So if you compare the the path here, you can see this one is lower, that's your last cut here. This one's gone all the way through, why that one? Your last onion cut uh, stays on the same level as your first cut, which is one millimeter above the table. It's the same thing, it's the same thing with your long narrow piece. It's one millimeter above the table. Another trick I want to show you is how we can trim your off cuts. Uh, if you basically cut this these pieces out, you end up with a really very jagged board. Uh, you see they all have steps here. You can do a trim cut here to make the board nice and straight. So it's quite easy. Um, once you have everything optimized, you can draw a line and can convert it into a, a trim cut. Cut the line. So what I do is I usually just, to make it nice and parallel, I use the midpoint of the board to the opposite midpoint. Then we turn it to a top view here, and then we can accurately place the, the trim cut. Use the move command, select it. And then we move it somewhere here. So now what we can do is we're going to analyze a cam, go into accessories, and here you have some path names here that you can select. They're actually the ones in the path manager that we call line, so that's just a simple line cut. So we have one that's called board trim cut, you can convert that line into a tool path. Select it, enter. So what it's done now is it's converted it into a tool path here which cuts slightly through by 0.2 millimeter into your waste board and it cuts the board nice and straight. So when we look into the path manager here, we have defined it as, one, as the last cut, so it definitely has to do it at the end. We call it the board trim cut. And when we look at the specification here, the, it's called obviously the trim cut. The tooth priority is the very last one. It's a center cut. We're using the 10 millimeter compression cutter with the tubing, so we can use it for MDF as well. And it has a final depth of, I mean, of minus 0.2 millimeter. Then uh, while we're there, we have another tool pass defined, which is for V-grooving. I'll show you that quickly. 
it's uh, defined as a path type line. Uh, a small p strategy, we don't really need to enable that. That's actually wrong. And uh, when we look at the tool, it has one cut, tool order one, that's the only one. The depth level is OZ. That stands for object Z level. So whatever you place your line into the object, that's uh, your final depth. So that's ideal for engraving and things like that. Uh, we, if you do engraving, you obviously don't want to have a lead in and a lead out. We just do a plunge there. So I can show you what it does. So anything that's a polyline will be converted into toolpath. I select polyline. I can do arcs. Back to line again. The next thing we want to do is set this two millimeter under the the, the board thickness. At the moment, this sits at the zero level here. Elevation is zero, so we want to put it to sixteen millimeter above the table. So that's your final depth of your V groover. So that's just just two millimeter under the surface. So we go to accessories. In this case, we select the V groove and we convert the line into a tool path. Select it, press enter. And here is your tool path. You see, it's only a two millimeter plunge here. And it has been put into the V groove layer. So just to demonstrate this in a G code. We can run it through the post processor. We call it V groove. Select the objects. Process it. Let's have a look at the G code. We have our V groove G code here. Let's look at the very end. So we should see we should see our trim cut here. So it's a ten millimeter uh, two wing cutter. So it does the last cut. It goes down to a depth of uh, zero point two millimeter into the waste board. And uh, so this is our last onion cut here, and this one is the V groover. So it's done a couple of curves here in G two cycles, and it's done at the at the Z level of sixteen millimeter. So it's two millimeter into the board. And that completes lesson 12.